South Africa is fast approaching cold winters and faced with the prospect of the worst ever power cuts. And today we are going to Batung, load shedding. <music> lights are back on let us get on with the regular programming hello hi sawana and welcome to masha's safe space this is a space where i share my mind in hopes that you will share your mind with me welcome on this video i'll be tackling what i define as the biggest threat to our success as a nation which is load shedding here's an interesting fact we were first introduced to load shedding in the end of 2007 and ever since it has intensified and has made our lives something of a living hell on the other hand ascom's tariffs have increased by 653 percent in the period while inflation only increased by 129 percent here is another massive fact that you should know ASCOM's debt is massive and it is reliant on the taxpayer to bail it out. As you can tell, there is a lot going on and the prospect of us being without electricity for extended hours is definitely on the rise and that is quite worrisome. It gets one wondering what happened, what shifted for us to move from being an internationally recognized power utility or energy supplier to being today what seems to be a fallen hero or rather the reason for most of South Africans frustrations like what happened to ESCOM is the biggest question. Before I answer that question I want to put it clear and loud that my answer has got nothing to do with political affiliation. I am not here to talk ill of any political party or promote another political party but I am here to state what I have found and what seems to be fixed from my observation and research. With that said and put on the side, I would love to say that from my observation and research, it seems as though the ANC is the source of problems at ESCOM. I don't want to bite my tongue and say that the ANC and ESCOM are working together or whatever the case may be. However, to get to a point where we, we are, I can say that the ANC, as the ruling party, failed to manage, maintain, and preserve what they found at the ESCOM when they took over power. Not to mention their legacy of state capture and corruption. Let us look a bit deep into this and see what we can find. When the ANC came into power in the 90s, they embarked on a massive electrification scheme whereby they added a lot of people on the electricity grid which significantly added pressure on the grid and you know we the grid was not ready for the amount of supply that the demand came with please keep in mind that at this point the ANC did not build any new power stations they only relied on the power stations that they found working others were closed at some point but they only relied on power stations which were built in the 1960s and the 1970s, which indicates that the, when the ANC added people on the grid, all on their, remember when they're campaigning and saying, we'll give you free electricity, we'll give you what, what, right? In that campaign, they never took into mind that they need to plan for people to be added on the grid. They need to build, they need a budget, and you know, they need a plan of action. From what we see today, we can say that the ANC failed to plan and execute its mass electrification scheme without actually eventually, you know, collapsing the grid. It is also important to keep in mind that throughout the years, the ANC was warned of the capacity issues and the infrastructure issues that the plants were faced with. However, again, during the leadership of President Tabum Begi, the ANC ignored the alarming capacity and infrastructure issues at our electric plants. The ANC truly failed to prioritize these issues. They failed to privatize ESCOM when the call for it came up and also they proceeded with no plan of action. Even at this point, they proceeded and then they had no budget. They just trusted that somehow investors will come from somewhere and then 
They will solve the capacity, infrastructure, and management issues at ESCOM. There are speaks of the government running its relationship with coal mining companies when they changed policies so much that the coal mining companies could not deal with them anymore. They were like, okay, fine, take, take it and leave us alone. So we've always had supply issues from the 90s. Supply has always been a constant worry, right? However, how do you then turn around and ruin your relationship with the people who are supplying you with coal? It don't make sense, right, does it? The whole management and the way things were run at ESCOM till today, from the 90s when the ANC took over, it doesn't make sense. As the old saying goes, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And so did the ANC. Again, under the leadership of President Jacob Zuma, the ANC commissioned to build two new power plants, which is Gusile and Midupi. However, the issue was, when they built these power plants, they really built them abruptly. They had to be built quickly. The NC did not have time. And as a result, these two power stations are just a nightmare. They're a structural nightmare. They're a procedural nightmare. They are a mechanical nightmare. It is just a mess. And to take into consideration that the type of coal that is needed by those plants is so specific it creates other nightmares for the plants so then that adds on to the load shedding issue because now if these new plants which were built to assist with capacity don't work to to their optimum capacity themselves then we're stuck in the same problem which leads me to agree with people when they say that the issues at escom or electricity power plants are actually sabotage deliberate sabotage by the nc and the people in government because how do you explain this how do you sit from the 90s to the early 2000s you've been told about something and then the mid 2000s you're like okay so let's build things and then when you build these things you use companies that basically cannot be found by no one and you make sure that you apply all the bee requirements and whatever so that it just becomes more expensive to execute this thing you basically ensure that the expenditure or the expenses of building the power station is just unbelievably so much because of poor management corruption that is just so rife and contracts that are done behind the scenes i task you with going to do your research on all of the corruption that has happened at escom also, there's just allegations of the ANC making sure that they profit from every contract that has that happens at ESCOM to an extent that they are now, you know, cartels. They are cartels, they are murder cartels, they are corrupt people at every stage of the government, of every institution, everywhere to ensure that. The corruption at ESCOM does not stop. The sabotage at ESCOM does not stop. Your lights at home don't come on at some hours of the day. Your business stops. Your life stops. Our economy is legit collapsing. It is on its knees because of people who want to make sure that there is money getting inside their pockets. Throughout the years, we've seen how the ANC have made sure that they hire incompetent managers. They hire incompetent board members. It has been a move of parties, a move of leadership. And we all know where there is no stable leadership, there is no progress or things cannot be found. If there is so much corruption and there's so much movement in leadership, how are we supposed to prove anything? How are we supposed to know who did what and what happened? Because now... Power came from anywhere and everyone and half these people are not even supposed to be in power. They, they, they are not well equipped for the job. It is just a mess. And to consider that ESCOM is literally the heartbeat of our survival. It is the heartbeat of our economic, you know, health. Without ESCOM, what can we do? They don't want to privatize it. We are just stuck with the tariff that keeps going up and up and higher and higher. Gurgi, I don't even know. I do not know. We have allowed corruption to get to a level of, 
you know, to get to a level of a pandemic. We need help because this is not co corruption anymore. It is a pandemic and we are under siege. Today, we are at a point where crime has increased because half the time the lights are out. Investors are pulling their legs in investing in South Africa. Oh my gosh, if I were to tell you that even people were out here saying that even remote employers are not considering South Africans anymore because of the electricity issue. So this load shedding is like a dark cloud which is hovering over our nation and the ANC is taking every stupid, stupid measure to solve this. They are not facing the real issue, which is the corruption. No, instead, they're just hiring and, and, and replacing and reshuffling their, their, their whatnot. We have commissions. We have this minister of electricity who seems to be looking at God for answers, I may repeat. And he's also prioritizing everything but ESCOM. He's been everywhere dancing. He's been seen having fun. Yes, that was prior to his appointment, but who cares? He's been anyway and everywhere. But hands on deck with the ESCOM issues. He's just doing other things. Somehow, Hyundai and Toyota and Mercedes will solve the issues at ESCOM. I'll go back to my point. From my observation and my research, the issues at ESCOM root somewhere in the ANC. This alleged sabotage is a song that has been sung by a lot of people who were once employed by the ESCOM. The people who used to work at ESCOM say that with everything that has happened since the ANC took over in the 90s, we shouldn't be facing this type of load shedding. Yes, we have capacity issues. Yes, we have infrastructure issues. Yes, we have um, coal supply issues. Yes, we have this and that and that. However, it shouldn't be as bad as this. It should give us a space to breathe. It should give us a space to come with new ideas. This is not the end. This should We shouldn't be here. If this intense load shedding can be prevented, we deserve a chance to at least listen to the people who are saying so. People who are informed, people who come from inside. Those are the people that we need speaking up. Okay, I hear the former CEO of ESCOM, Mr. Debray. However, I can't help but wonder you know, it took him too long to speak. It took him too... I don't like people because people who do that are very shady to me. However, I'm not saying he's incorrect. I'm not saying I'm not getting his point. It is worth it, I think, for every one of us to actually listen to him and listen to other people who used to who work for ESCOM so that we can make our decision and get to decide for ourselves because these commissions and these investigations... Honestly, they're just fruitless to me. They are just proving to be useless because that's another money going down a drain. Taxpayers' money which goes down the drain. They, somehow South Africa solves issues by having a commission. And now we have a minister of electricity and who does nothing. So for me, I feel like in order for us to make our informed decision and perhaps this will motivate us to vote better in 2020, 2024, or in our next elections, then it is best for us to do our research, listen to both sides of the story because we've heard so much of this sabotage at ESCO. Like there is, okay, we have a little, but there is this tone, there is this song being sung of this sabotage. We probably both know that ESCOM was never initially built to cover everyone in, on the grid. Black people and people somewhere in the locations or whatever, they were never prioritized when ESCOM was initially built. And it was the job of the NC, I would love to think, when they took over running the country, when they took over, it was it should have been their job to ensure that if they campaign and go around and say, we're going to give you electricity, they ensure that they have the plans to provide that electricity or they have a plan you know they have a supplier of electricity you know they have alternative means not coal whatever however they just chose to ride on something they didn't know it came from they do not know how it works they, they know nothing they just jumped in i don't know who sabotaged us here was it the previous government or us by not being smart
that is it from me thank you so much for joining me on this one please do not forget to like if you loved this video please like it share it with everyone who might be interested and please 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 do subscribe to my channel i would love to have you thank you so much for chilling with me until the next video please take care bye